Hello everyone, welcome to week four. Today we'll, we'll be talking about the Constitution uh, in two lectures. The first one, uh, this lecture, will be kind of a basic overview of the Constitution of the United States. Now we'll go into more detail on the specific kind of constitutional provisions for the different branches of government when we talk about them in a few coming weeks, but I wanted to make sure that everyone kind of get, has a basic overview of the structure of the Constitution and the type of government it sets out because if you're like most people, your eyes probably glazed over a little bit reading through the prose of the Constitution. Um, so I wanna start here with the preamble, this first sentence of the Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to this ourselves and to our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. You can think of the preamble as kind of a mission statement or uh, what is the purpose of this constitution, right? What is the purpose of government in the United States? And there's a series of answers to that question, um, establishing a more perfect union, establishing justice, ensuring tr peace in the, among the states and within the states, providing for the common defense of the 13 states, promoting the welfare of the people and securing liberty um, for themselves and for future generations, right? So what I'd like for you to think about, and we'll talk about this in discussion section, um, is this an accurate list of the purposes of government? Is there something that the framers of the constitution have missed, left out in what government should be or should be doing? Or is there something that they've actually included here that shouldn't be the role of government? Just something to kind of think about uh, as we're working through the constitution. So the Constitution's first article begins with the legislature, and this is because the framers felt, uh, and many kind of political theory and theories and philosophers at the time, felt that the most important power of the government was the legislative, the ability to make laws, that the chief executive was less important, but that the real seat of government was who makes the laws. Um, and so uh, they spent a lot of time developing what, how exactly the laws at the federal level are going to be passed. Now remember, this is a huge break from the Articles of Feder Confederation, which did not have, empower the federal government really to do much of anything. So all legislative power, the sole ability to make laws for the United States is vested in Congress, which we made up of two houses. The, the lower house, the House of Representatives, is chosen every second year by the states. Now the constitution itself doesn't necessarily say how they will be elected. Uh, it gives that up to the states. Um, all members must be 25 years old. Uh, and the apportionment of representatives to the different states are going to be based on population. And it is in this section that you have the infamous three-fifths clause in which it will be based on the population of all free persons and three-fifths of all other persons. So again, this was that slaves in the, in the colony, in the states would be counted as three-fifths of, of a person for the purposes of representation, but they would be denied any enfranchisement or any of the rights of guaranteed by the Constitution, uh, this double standard written into the text of the Constitution itself. The upper house, the Senate, will be chosen stand for, uh, be chosen by the states every six years. It wasn't until the 16th Amendment that we get the direct election of senators. Uh, there'll be two for every state, so they'll be equally represented, and all senators must be 30 years old. Section four includes some logistics about the representation of the election and selection uh, of of senators, you don't need to worry too much about uh, section four of the Constitution uh, of Article one. Um, it talks about the time, manner, and place of elections and that they actually have to meet. Um, and then section five talks about that they have the right to determine their own membership. They have to keep a journal of proceedings and other kind of logistical questions. So section six includes um, the idea that we should pay our senators and representatives, uh, that they can't hold other positions of authority, and they, except in cases of pre treason, be privileged from arrest during their attendance at the session of their respective houses. Now, section seven describes the legislative process uh, with the restriction that all bills raising revenues or raising funds involving money uh, must begin in the House, but all bills must pass both chambers before going to the president for signing or veto. We'll talk about the legislative process in more detail when we get to Congress. Um, if the bill is vetoed, it can be overridden by a two-thirds vote. Section eight, the longest section of the first article, details specific enumerated powers of the Congress. It detail, and we'll talk about these in more detail, um, but these are the specific things that Congress can do. Um, a couple of 
I, key things to remember, the Interstate Commerce Clause, uh, giving Congress the right to regulate commerce among the states, and the Necessary and Proper Clause, that Congress should have the power to do all things necessary and proper to um, establish these other powers, have been used to expand the power of Congress beyond these specific powers. Section nine includes a series of limitations on Congress. These include the explicit preservation of the slave trade until 1808, as well as protections for habeas corpus um, that you cannot be held indefinitely without trial, uh, the provision of bills of attainder and ex post facto laws that you can't just simply um, declare someone to be guilty of a crime. Um, you also, excuse me, there are also um, no titles of nobility can be passed, uh, uh, can be, can be instated. And section 10 includes some limitations on states. They can't coin money or pass tariffs or engage in foreign policy. Those are powers reserved to Congress. Article 2 details the, the executive branch, most notably the president. Um, the, the, the section 1 details that the executive's authority shall lie in the president and the vice president that, are, that will be elected by the electoral college, uh, the, that the electors from each state will meet to elect the electoral college to, so, to vote for president, and the president must be a natural born citizen of at least 35 years old. Uh, the powers of the president, um, explicitly he's the, they are, uh, he or she is given the power of the commander in chief of the armed forces. They are the head of state. They engage in all diplomatic activity and they are the chief executive. They can appoint a cabinet agency heads um, and kind of engage vigorously enforce the, the laws that are passed by Congress. Section three says details that the president shall meet, go to Congress and provide information on the state of the union and make any sort of policy recommendations that they say fit. And section four details the process of impeachment that the, the house can uh, pass articles of impeachment. That's the trial it goes to the Senate that is overseen by the chief justice of the Supreme Court. And the, the punishment for impeachment is removal from office and potential disbarment from future offices. Article three details the judicial system of the United States, um, including, and basically it's fairly vague. It says that the judicial system will be the Supreme Court. Um, and any other courts that Congress deems fit to establish, and that all members of the federal judiciary shall have uh, terms of good behavior, so lifetime appointments unless they are impeached. Um, section two details different jurisdictions for the different courts. We'll talk about jurisdictional questions when we talk about the judiciary. And section three details the uh, crime of treason and the punishments thereof. Article four details how the states should relate to each other, um, including the full faith and credit clause that um, states have to respect the proceedings and, 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 and laws passed by other states. So if um, certain rights that are given to one state has to be respected if you go to another state. Uh, section two details the privileges and immunities between states that you cannot um, discriminate among non-state travel, uh, non-residents of, other states, while they are in your state, you can't just bar them from fun basic rights. Like you cannot say that they are not allowed to, you know, get, stay at hotels or make purchases or whatnot. Um, but it does include the, the 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 clause that the all escaped slaves that make it to a state in which there is not slavery, um, the state that doesn't exalt that, that doesn't free them, that they there's an obligation of states to return slaves to their owners. Section three details the admission of new states that Congress can admit new states, but it cannot carve off uh, states without the consent. And section four uh, include, uh, contends that the constitution must guarantee a Republican form of government to all the states. And we'll talk about whatever, what the founding framers meant by a Republican form of government. Um, spoiler alert, it doesn't mean that only Republicans can be in charge of the government. We'll talk about Article 5 in just a second. Uh, Article 6 details the supremacy of the Constitution in, that, in which it states that um, the Constitution and the laws of the United States that are made in pursuance of the Constitution, as well as any treaties that the United States shall engage in, are the supreme law of the land and that they are bound in every state, that they, you cannot pass a law in a state that would violate the laws of the passed by the federal government or uh, violate the Constitution. Um, and that everyone has to be has to, every senator, representative, members of the state legislature, the executive and judicial officers, and, um, and, and the president has a specific oath of office, but all of these government officials have to swear an oath of office. But uh, as it notes here, no religious test shall ever be required. Whoops. No religious test shall ever be required uh, 
or as a qualification uh, to any office or public trust under the United States. Uh, this, th there's already kind of built in even before we get to the Bill of Rights, the, uh, the freedom of religion. Article seven deals with ratification. It's very short. The ratification of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of this constitution between the states so ratifying the same. Um, and this, uh, the, the, uh, the idea here with uh, this cartoon here is that once certain states kind of ratified the constitution, once you got enough of larger states, the rest of the states would all follow in order to, because they wouldn't want to be independent of the constitution. So how can people go about changing the constitution? Article five, this is where article five comes in. Uh, and it is a very complicated process for dealing with amendments, but it does indicate that you can change the constitution. While article six indicates that it is the supreme law of the land, it is not unchangeable. And there, this process can take in two forms. Um, though the one thing you cannot do is deprive the equal suffrage in the Senate without the state's consent. So the amendment process takes two forms. They can amendments to the constitution can be proposed by Congress. They then go to the states for ratification, either with three quarters of state legislatures uh, of the state legislatures agreeing to ratify or three quarters of the states have ratifying, have hold conventions and those conventions agree to ratify the amendment. Then it's the constitutional amendment. The other process is that the state, two thirds of the states can petition the Congress to hold a constitutional convention for the purposes of proposing amendments to the constitution. Basically you can have a new constitutional convention and rewrite the constitution. Um, all proposed changes then have to get ratified by three quarters of the states in the same process. Um, it's important to note that all, um, the, all current amendments to the constitution have gone through this process. They've been proposed by Congress and then gone to the states for ratification. There have not been any um, constitutional conventions called to for the ratification of amendments to the constitution. So that is it for this kind of brief overview of the constitution. Hopefully that'll help to keep things straight for you. Um, the next lecture for this week focuses on more of the political theories underlining the constitutional provisions. Um, specific, we're gonna be focusing on republicanism, separation of powers and federalism. Um, and answering that age old question of the internet that is the United States a republic or a democracy? So that's it for this lecture. I will see you for the next one. Take care.